good afternoon everyone um thanks for joining our uh, 20 seconds webinar in this uh, financial year um there are uh, many people are joining so um, let's uh, wait for another few seconds and uh, people will set down uh, settle down meanwhile uh, uh this particular uh, um, platform is only a one way platform where i can present i can speak but if you want to speak or if you want to raise any questions regarding the uh, this particular presentation you can always put uh, your uh, questions on chat uh, at here the chat room so i can see or uh, my colleague mr sanket will uh, uh, see that uh, particular questions and uh, we try to give our answers during the presentation as well as if it is a lengthy discussions then we will address those questions at the uh, end of the session so any questions you wanted uh, to um, ask please uh, um, post here at chat room so that we can we can see that we can answer it properly okay so good afternoon all <clears throat> i think sir let's uh, start the webinar mm -hmm. and uh, people would join in okay fine there are good good amount of people are joining so okay <clears throat> so once again thanks uh, as you know that uh, we are uh, conducting the seminar substation saturday uh, in the name of substation saturdays we are conducting these seminars to give uh, more knowledge to the um, uh, engineers more knowledge to the students on uh, electrical systems so today our session is on uh, automation using uh, rtus so that is called rtu based automation there are many automations like uh, bcu automation are there or or some other automations are there but we focus mainly on rtu based automation rtu or frtu based automation so this uh, this particular webinar is 22nd webinar where we have very series of uh, different topics uh, on uh, different subjects like uh, we have conducted breakers on breakers there is a vast topic on breaker a uh, breaker testing system in the transformer transformer testing system or communication system even the scada system even pmu we had uh, we had a good seminars or good webinars on pmu amu so there are a lot of uh, topics we have taken and we are conducting every uh, first and third uh, uh, saturday so next uh, so next webinar will be on uh, pd measurements that is partial discharge measurements it's mainly on the transformer topic that is on uh, march 5th so before that there is a, another uh, session also we are conducting that is mainly the users who are using our instruments or our solutions to train them we are conducting every first and third friday um, the hands on training sort of uh, uh, webinars so next uh, our hands on training sort of uh, webinar is on fourth that is on irm and erm insulation resistance um, and uh, earth resistance meters uh, um, hands hands of experience and um, the, the training on that these all are the things where we are delight to pass on our knowledge to our customers or to the industry with this one i am i am um, starting my presentation okay so this is what uh, uh, i i would uh, like to cover here this is completely a uh, technical sort of uh, th thing so the any any anything on the rtu or even on the communication on the scada you can ask here so we are we are um, started we are starting with the introduction a brief introduction i will give it to you Uh, about our uh, solutions and products 
this won't be more than uh, five minutes uh, I'll, I'll i'll not take more than uh, five minutes time here then we'll go into the real subject what is exactly rtu and frtu what are the different uh, um, parts of the rtu and uh, what are the things we need to look into the rtu when we are purchasing or when you are um, giving the any solution with the rtu and then applications where rtu RTU, FRTU are different uh, applications uh, using the RTU also we are we'll, we'll, uh, going to show. Then case studies. Some of the case studies what we are uh, <clears throat> installed and uh, running successfully. Those uh, case studies, very few case studies we are uh, going to show here. Then we'll uh, at the end of the session, we'll uh, open for the question and answers where um, you can ask uh, on the topics. <clears throat> so, uh, when it comes to the scope introduction, most of the uh, you guys know what is scope because we are from 1988, we are into this particular uh, field and uh, mostly all our solutions or instruments are across the, uh, spread across the country. So, timer cell AK from timer to uh, breaker analyzer to SCADA system or DMA system, we have we have uh, installed or we have uh, have a presence in e um, each one of the substations across the India, even uh, across the globe also. So we have uh, 300 and plus engineers working in our uh, group. And uh, this is what uh, ISO 9001 2015 certified uh, company and uh, we, we always follow the zero defect ZDMT quality policy in our uh, factory or while we are manufacturing any product. <clears throat> this is what we, we have presence in, uh, in India. Like uh, we have a corporate office in uh, Bombay and a factory and R&D is in Pune and regional office in uh, um, every major town uh, in India. And apart from this, we are also presence in 45 plus countries worldwide with our solutions and uh, with our uh, uh, instruments. So scope vertical, if you see the business vertical, we have, we are the manufacturers of testing and measuring instruments. So this is one of the business verticals we have. Then we have a protection solutions vertical. Under the protection solutions, we give CRP panels, uh, manufacturing of the CRP panels uh, and uh, SCADA system. We also, um, um, give the solution of retrofitting of the old relays by replacing the old relays to uh, with the numerical relays and uh, giving the complete uh, renovated scheme. So these are the under uh, covers under the protection system. Apart from that, we also give the communication services, testing and commissioning uh, activities, and uh, operation and maintenance activities uh, with uh, and uh, earth solutions also like. Uh, uh, earthing systems and solutions, measuring the earth uh, resistance and giving them the so, uh, giving the solutions also. And these are all our recognitions. We got the best product award in Electroma 2016 and uh, as well as uh, 2010 with our uh, <clears throat> uh, breaker uh, DCRM, breaker testing analyzer, DCRM as well as the um, uh, lightning arresters, leakage current monitor, LCM. So when it comes to a protection, we have this, uh, as I already uh, explained you, we are covering the control and relay panel manufacturing, relay retrofitting services. And we also provide the protection relays, advanced protection relays and VCS also. And uh, CSD, under this one, CSD, control switching device, PMU and AMU, and RTU automation system also we provide under the protection group, Ethernet solutions and uh, iot based solutions like uh, internet of things uh, and power system studies also we are uh, um, giving to our customers apart from this we are also giving a complete uh, automation system like scada oms dms and uh, and um, substation automation systems these all are our uh, um, uh, major uh, products we have in our portfolio when it comes to a, a particular like protection and automation system, we have executed more than 1200 uh, control and relay panels and executed and successfully working in, in uh, various substations. 
we have executed uh, our supplied 500 plus RTU automation panels, and um, we we provided uh, um, substation automation system till 400 kV, and we also have a full range of relays. Um, uh, these all are what we have uh, done from last uh, 25 years of experience. Apart from our um, uh, core uh, systems, uh, core uh, our technology of uh, testing and measuring instruments. So we have, uh, apart from this group, we have also, I told you that the TNM group, testing and measuring group, under the testing and measuring instruments, we are manufacturing the testing and measuring instruments and supplying like a breaker analyzer, breaker timers, breaker contact resistance meters, transformer uh, contact rest, uh, co transformer winding resistance meters, transformer turns ratio, and uh, oil BDV sort of things, and all sort of uh, uh, primary equipment testing instruments we are uh, supplying under the uh, TNM uh, business group. So with this, I just uh, completed my introduction because most of the people are knowing uh, scope but a few people who are having um, uh, um, students or uh, other um, new to the electrical uh, engineering or electrical um, professions, uh, they are also joining. So I just wanted to brief them also what we are doing in the field of uh, electrical systems. So with this one, we are going into a main topic that is called RTU, RTU automation system means using RTU, how we can do the automation. See, uh, there was a earlier we had a we have conducted one webinar on the SCADA system. This is completely having the SCADA and installation of the RTUs at the substations and taking the data from that particular uh, RTU uh, to the control center, then controlling uh, complete uh, uh, single line diagrams with all the substation related uh, 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 events and uh, monitoring of those substations, we are covered under the SCADA system. But when it comes to this particular topic, we are completely stick uh, to the automation using the RTU because why it is very important uh, and what is the difference between the main uh, SCADA, RTU, uh, SCADA system and the um, automation using the RTUs. Because when, when you go for the SCADA system and a bigger system, so uh, the money involved, the expenditure which is involved in that particular system, like uh, you have to um, uh, connect a gateways at the substation station by using by using the 61850 protocols, connecting or taking the data from all the 61850 protocol um, protocol relays and sending those uh, data to control center or uh, substation automation system. These all are very expensive uh, sort of uh, solutions where then if you are um, using a new substations or if you are considering the new substation maybe that will be helpful using that automation system but when it comes to a old system or existing substation where you wanted to make those existing substation into the automation system so either what you need to do if you want to give a automation system to the particular substation or particular group of substations what you need to do you have to either completely um, um, replace the numeric uh, the existing relays with the numerical relays. If it is already having the numerical relays, that is okay. Otherwise, if it is having the old relays not compatible with the new protocols like 61850 and other protocols, so you have to completely replace it. Then there are a lot of uh, wirings with a lot of signals you need to take it and give it to the automation system. That is again. A tedious job where you don't want to put those that much of resources on the existing system and you want still you want a automated system um, having the similar uh, features of the whatever you are we are using the um, latest uh, um, uh, substation automation system so we 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 may have intermediately this particular solution by using the rtus so <clears throat> So let's let's uh, we'll talk about what is exactly this RTU. So so many times people are uh, very uh, confused with the, the uh, terminology. Some people says that uh, RTU, some people says that uh, gateways, some people says that uh, um, uh, FRTUs. So these are all the different terminology used. 
no uh, mainly rtu means remote terminal unit so there are many different applications uh, rtu will be having like rtu can be used as a gateway gateway means collecting the data and sending it to the um, uh, control center or or you can use those all are collecting the field data and give it to the one particular um, um, software so that you can visualize the um, complete substations so that is again a one one of the applications so these are all the different terminology uses so don't confuse with that if you are using the rtu so rtu means it's a bigger um, didos and bigger uh, capacity of handling the data but some people when it comes to particularly comes to the discounts they use the fort use fort means feeder monitoring uh, terminal unit feeder remote terminal unit where the similar function of rtu will be reduced to a uh, uh, section of didos then they can um, use this particular uh, uh, fort use for the um lesser uh, functionality so that you reduce the um, uh, pricing pricing and reduce the cost of that particular uh, system so that's what we call it a fort you fort you nothing but a, a reduced applications and features from the rtu like reducing the didvo inputs reducing the divo inputs or analog inputs and reducing the cpu capacity those things will be uh, um, a minimal compared to the rtu so that is what uh, they call it as the fortis some people call the gateways so those things are also we are going to explain here but rtu or fortu or gateway the functionality is same the configuration the um, um, main design is same uh, uh, collecting the data and sending the data to uh, a system on different protocols so when it comes to rtu it is a complete electronic um, microprocessor controlled electronic device and it interface with the physical world like uh, breaker se information lenge so it will take the information or uh, status from the breaker it will take the status from the status or information from the transformer it takes uh, uh, status or um, uh, information from the relay and collect it so in the substation what it will do it will connect with the physical world and uh, uh, send it to the Uh, the, the the digital world sort of things like you can say that so there are better um, explanations are there but complicated explanations but this is very easy explanation where rtu will connect with the uh, physical world and those collecting the data and uh, analyzing the data and sending to the uh, uh, the monitoring systems like uh, hmis human um, machine interface sort of things and it transmit the telemetry data to a master system and employ for the remote term, remote monitoring control of the functions and instruments so you want to make, you want to monitor a particular uh, thing from the remotely you can use the rtu where it will take the uh, data and send it to you on uh, various protocols and you can monitor sitting here at remote and seeing what's happening there so that will uh, be enabled by this rtu uh, to monitor those uh, remote um, uh, things or even the uh, primary equipments or you want to see that suppose today what we are doing in the substations uh, control room is if you go to the old substations and old control rooms having the very big uh, two uh, different uh, panels are there one is the control panel and relay panel the control panel is completely mechanical uh, driven uh, control panel will be there that will be resembled the your uh, primary equipments what is the breaker status there is a one semaphore indicator will be used for uh, showing the breaker status or um, uh, isolator status even the meters data or allow alarms annunciations so but the problem is that if you are using those sort of uh, old systems you will be you you may require more space and also human interface is more important in that one but you want to make it that particular thing at a, all these data uh, should be bought at the one pc then uh, what you need to do you can use one one uh, sort of device which will collect the data from the field and give it to you on the uh, system so that is what the importance of this particular rtu <clears throat> and uh, operating principles also same like it will it will connect with the digital data it will collect the digital data and the uh, analog data and analyze 
also connect with the digital output like if you want to operate the breaker from uh, a system you give the command to the system and that command will give the information to the rtu and the rtu will uh, enable this uh, do then the breaker will be closed there so there is a input data from the breaker isolators and uh, uh, mfts and uh, then it will analyze it based on the software or based on the commands which is been uh, given in the software it will either give the data to you or it will also based on the logic it will uh, send the data to uh, the breaker or, or any other operation uh, devices and uh, when it comes to a uh, communication it is very important to understand what communication we are using for the rtu, uh, RTU automation systems like nowadays we are using um, there are two different type of protocols we are using one is the within the substation there is a one protocol and a, a transmission ke liye, there is a one more uh, protocol we are using so within the substation there are different protocols one is the modbus protocol which is the old protocol uh, nowadays we are using only in uh, uh, meters mfts like uh, multifunction trans transducers or multifunction meters mfms where we want to take the data uh, the ctpt data um, to be connected with the rtu so we use the modbus uh, communication still or if you want to use the field data from the relay then we are using either 61F0, that is the latest protocol we are using, or um, there is a one more protocol, old protocol we are using, that is, uh, um, uh, sorry, just a minute, just a minute, some customer is. Okay. 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 Um, uh, Sanket, just a minute, sir. It's a webinar is going, and I'll I'll inform my um, uh, colleague Sanket to talk to you, sir. Uh, uh, Sanket. Yeah. There are a few people who could not able to join the webinar uh, from the link. It is saying that uh, there is no response uh, or acceptance from uh, uh, the admin. I think they are trying to register now. Uh, you can give them my number and send them the link. Okay, uh, just tell me number double nine triple nine. Last of three digits. So, okay. We have that my number so that uh, can... two three four right okay. yeah two three four okay fine uh, so um there are many protocols uh, we are uh, using for the RTU communication where uh, substation or uh, communications are mainly um, when it comes to the relay communication, mostly we are using the 61F0 relay. That is the latest uh, um, uh, protocol we are using in the relays. When it comes to uh, meter, we are using the Modbus uh, protocols. These are the uh, substation protocols where data will be collected uh, to the uh, up to the RTU using this Modbus or uh, 61F0. There is another old protocol still people are using. Mostly those protocols are replaced with the 61F0. That is called 103 protocol still um, people are using. So that is again the substation protocol. So when it comes to the communication protocols, like from RTU to the uh, real world of SCADA system and other things, there are the major two protocols still we are using. One is the 101 protocol or uh, 104 protocol, that is six, IEC 60870-5-101 uh, and 104 protocol. 101 protocol is a, a bold protocol, which is normally works on the serial uh, protocol. So the bandwidth and the other issues are there. So 
and when it comes to 104 protocol it is a ip based protocol so it is very fast and uh, uh, completely on the ip based and uh, IP, ip based protocol so in future maybe a 61850 will be implemented for the communication also so that is going on so maybe up, uh, till now we can use uh, 104 protocol as a communication protocol so these are the main uh, things when you are considering for the rtu you have to see that what is what is the number of didos you required and how many dos are you required how many dis are required what is the purpose of using the dis like you want to take the breaker status you want to take the um, um, any other status like um, mtr status like master trip relay status or relay status or um, uh, isolator status those status you want to take it you use the di um, uh, digital inputs and you want to trip the breaker then you may use for the devo protocol so when you are making or purchasing the any rtus you have to look into these two or three aspects one is the dis how many dis you required how many devos you required what what is going to be operated with this rtu and main important is what is the communication you required from the uh, substation side and the communication side, uh, uh, remote side. These two protocols also will be very important uh, for um, uh, using this uh, RTU, RTU configurations. The next is, uh, when you see that this is the typical automation architecture, where you see that all these relays are connected to optical fort or, or uh, um, network like on 61 network if you release on 61 network zero few relays on 103 protocol and meters are connected on mode bus and these these things are connected again with the, um, uh, the there is a process level uh, system there is that is called um, uh, substation level where breakers ctpts are there so these CT2 um, relays are connected with the um, hardware and from relays to the SCADA system or local substation automation system is completely on uh, either on Ethernet uh, system or optical fiber. And there is one more uh, system where you want to send all this data to um, uh, LDC or SLDC or NLDC. You may go for the um, uh, gateways that is our, our uh, RTUs, where it takes all the data from relays, um, BCUs and meters and connect it uh, on 61850 and send it the, all this data to LDC or um, um, SLDCs on 104 protocol or either 101 protocol. This is the typical automation system right now we are using. But when it comes to the, the RTU based automation system, this is what uh, the system we are using. <coughs> like, like I told you that many, many, many things. Um, um, sorry, uh, Sanket, have you uh, talked to them? Yeah, sir. I think he has joined in also. Okay, fine. Yeah. So when when it comes to the RTU based automation system, what what happens? Um, uh, you have already installed relays. You have already uh, having the breakers and uh, everything to be automated. So what you need to do, you have to take all these DIs, their digital inputs, digital outputs, um, meter data uh, and relay data, completely hardware with the copper wires to the RTU. So this is what the automation, RTU based automation looks like. You can see earlier, earlier slide, it is completely a new automation system where the new substations are coming up with. Where you can see that there are lesser copper whites. Everything is from process level to bay level. From here, process level to bay level, only the copper whites. Still, we are using the copper whites. And from bay level to automation level and higher levels will be on the completely Ethernet cable or uh, optical fiber cable. So this is what the typical um, um, uh, automation or SCADA um, substation automation system are uh, working. But tomorrow, maybe uh, from process level to bay level, we are still using the hardware. But maybe uh, uh, with this one, um, uh, digital substations are using the electronic CTs, electronics, PT, we may even replace this hardware with the 
um, optical fiber. So completely from breaker to relay, breaker to um, uh, the um, other systems completely on the optical fiber. That is what the future is going to come. But when it, when we are talking about the RQ based automation system, this is what still we have uh, we we required. Like completely, you you take the switch gear or uh, breaker, all the data hardwarely connected to the RQ, and um, CTPT is again connected to your MFTs or MFMs. That will be again connected to the RQ, and if any other things like you want to. Um, um, send the open the breaker so rtu from rtu to um, breaker also you require to connect uh, hardware which is which will be um, uh, connected with their um, uh, breaker uh, opening or closing uh, coils so when you are connecting uh, this is what uh, you can uh, see that or look like in the field but when it comes to the rtu's uh, system where rtu will take all this hardware data and analyze and send it on the digital form to the to the system. So you can see that substation HMI somewhere here. You can see completely, very clearly mentioned all the single line diagrams and representation of this uh, particular uh, substation at the primary side. So this is what you can see here with the, with using RTU. Uh, you can still simplify. I, I just want to put it this another uh, form of uh, um, picture where you can see same like earlier uh, which are this is looks very clumsy so this is what uh, uh, the um, architectural diagram where you see all did was means di means your breaker or isolator whatever maybe that is again connected to the rtu and all these mfms like your energy ctpt will be connected uh, to the mfm and from there rtu and uh, then rtu will send to the router to the control center or um, within the local also you want to monitor suppose today what you are doing you are um, installing one RTU and uh, you are sending this data to the control center or um, the SCADA system but you want to the, the person who is sitting at um, uh, substation want to see the data or see the their uh, substation and the single line diagram they can simply connect locally one ethernet cable and that connected with uh, their laptop or uh, system they can also see their substation uh, what is the different feeders different uh, breakers status and the energy uh, systems energy parameter they can locally also see the substation instead of uh, seeing it uh, panel board instead of seeing it the annunciation panel they can also see here yes, that is what the um, uh, rtu have that uh, particular features uh, built in this uh, system I'll, I'll explain more about uh, in the coming slides. Uh, again, this is the RTU, common RTU looks like. I'll, I'll put one small RTU, but you want to make it RTU. Uh, this is normally called FRTU, but you want to make it RTU. Only thing is that you have to add this DIDO cards to this particular processor. Then it become a, a big uh, yeah, RTU, which will be capable to or cater to um, uh, to more than uh, 10 to 15 uh, feeders. So this is normally a typical RTU looks like where you have a processor, like this is one is the processor where you have a wireless uh, modem sort of uh, antenna inputs, then power supply inputs. Then there is a ports like ethernet ports, optical ports, and uh, RS-485 ports, RS-232 ports. These are the different ports you can use it here. Uh, this is your power and uh, if you want to use the still the old uh, sort of telephone uh, lines uh, telephone signal sort of things you you have the telephone uh, port this is one rs485 uh, rs232 this is again one more uh, rs232 or 485 this is ethernet and these all are the optical uh, you can directly connect the relays with the optical port so these are the different ports available again this is based on your requirement how many ports you want suppose to you you have many feeders and all these feeders are connected uh, those feeders data need to be captured then what you need to do you have to install the mfts and those mfts will be connected in the loop in loop out and connected to one RS-232 port. 
then then based on that you can choose our sizing your uh, rs232 ports and ethernet port is mainly um, 61850 purpose otherwise 104 sending the data uh, to control center on 104 protocol so you can use that particular ethernet port also and these optical ports are mainly if you have the 61850 protocol relays in the system you can directly connect on the network those relays and those one fiber optic cable connected to here so you don't require to connect the hard wiring uh, with the, uh, to this particular relay so that is what you need to sizing your um, rtu based on your requirement and then when it comes to this is what uh, cpu card is having these many ports when it comes to a didos this is the di section where again you you have to calculate how many dis you required suppose normal one card is having the eight dis one card comes with the eight dis if you want to more cards you can add those cards like eight dis 16 dis uh, multiplication of eight uh, can be achieved so this is what the here you can see here the two dis are there so total 16 uh, dis are there uh, um, sorry this is the analog inputs so analog input means um these are the dis di cards the four di cards are there and four do cards are there and uh, what i'm saying analog inputs this is analog inputs outputs also there like um there are few requirement most of the cases we don't use the analog inputs and analog outputs but few of the cases like you want to change the transformer tap tap changing or or you want to measure the temperatures you want to measure the pressures of the transformer where you may require the analog inputs like this analog inputs normally measure the 0 to 20 milliamps input like when you see the pressure uh, transducers output always would be on the 0 to 20 milliamps or voltage uh, 0 to 40 volts um, normally it will give that so that particular input connect directly connected to this rtu instead uh, using without uh, using any intermediate system you can directly connect uh, those um, analog outputs to this particular rtu so that you will directly take the data from the pressure the transducers or oil temperature transducers even temperature transducers and uh, this will be uh, directly connected and analog output is mainly it will also produce whereas the analog input will take the data, analog like uh, 0 to 20 milliamps data inside but analog output normally produce the uh, current like 0 to 20 milliamps current or 0 to 40 volts uh, voltage a very small voltages it will produce this will be normally used when it comes to generation generating stations and other stations where based on the applications what they do they want to change that uh, tap so there are some drivers are there that will be enabled by the uh, getting the uh, voltage or um, or milliamps current so when you are uh, doing any tap changing you do the tap changing at the software side that software will give the command to rtu rtu will uh, enable their D, um, aa aos like uh, analog outputs generating the like uh, 0 to 20 milliamps is the range so 4 milliamps 10 milliamps based on the tap it will generate the um, the current output or voltage output and that will be directly go to your driver so based on the voltage it will it will drive it and in that tap will change it sometimes you may use for opening the doors like the stepper motors output those things can be used this is again the application or application oriented based uh, systems so so mostly when you see that rtu rtu have these major components one is um, the antennas like uh, for the um, time synchronization purpose you have antenna you have the power card you have uh, communication uh, ports like uh, rs232 telephone uh, cables telephone port or rs232 ports or ethernet ports and uh, optical fiber this is the, um, this is the com uh, communication uh, ports when it comes to it um, uh, the other hardware you you can commonly find the di digital inputs do digital outputs and ais analog inputs and analog output this is what uh, normally uh, rt you have uh, these many uh, different sections of the um, uh, hardware 
and sir you have any any questions regarding these particular things uh, i think uh, you can always post on the chat uh, uh, chat room your uh, question so that we will be answering uh, after at the end of the session okay so this is what uh, uh, the rtu looks like when it comes to rtu functionality normally um, these particular ports are connected with this what are the different ports are connected to which uh, communication those things are defined here but normally see here uh, most of the cases what we need to do we have to when you are purchasing the rtu you have to keep in your mind one is the web H, web enabled hmi this is mainly when uh, it is important when you want to locally monitor the the system where you you install one rtu at the substation and uh, that particular substation you want to monitor uh, by connecting that particular local rtu you can just connect with your laptop that particular rtu and you can see the single end diagram of the rtu for that you need web hmi inbuilt in that so that you can see that um, single end diagram you can see that uh, alarms uh, events even you can see that the graphical representation within the rtu otherwise normally what happens if you are not having this particular web hmi inbuilt all the data which is connected at rtu will be sending to the scada so at the at the substation person cannot understand what is happening here if he want to troubleshoot something he cannot for him it is a black box he cannot do anything on that so that is what when you are purchasing or when you are considering to purchase rtu you have to see this web enabled hmi this will give you more advantage more um uh, troubleshooting uh, options at the local level and uh, there is a smart alarms and didos opc these are the things are there where you can uh, um, uh, based on your requirements you have to uh, size your rtu that is very important when you are purchasing the rtu <clears throat> and these all are the uh, different features we already explained you like hardware signals like digital inputs breaker uh, circuit breaker status isolator status protection trip alarms digital output like circuit breaker control dc fail acceptance and annunciation acceptance these all are the different uh, signal which can be hardwired to the your rtu and soft signal is that all these hard signals will be collected from the field and rtu will will convert those uh, hard signals into the soft signals sometimes it will analyze and put it the logical um, uh, equations and give it to the output also but the soft signals is normally uh, all this mft data is the soft signal because it's on modbus so it will take the modbus data ctpd data all these things will be sent it to the um, control center and these are the two different signals normally we use it in the rtus one is the soft signal and the hard signal um, hard wired signals and apart from this you have to also see that time synchronizations like when you are have using the rtu so better you should have that particular uh, feature of uh, synchronization uh, is very important rtu should have the synchronization even some rtus gives the um, clock output like it uh, normally what happens uh, rtu will take the signals from the scada the, the uh, synchronizing signal from the scada and it will automatically set his own clock when he is sending alarms or events it will be time stamped and send it to them but when it comes to uh, uh, hello yeah when it comes to um, <coughs> sorry there is some signal issues let me let me get it uh basta sir you are audible yeah 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 because some some snag is going on that's right okay i think you are mute sir yeah yeah so uh, when it comes to um, uh, time synchronization what happens um it will uh, take the time synchronization signal from the scada 
but few artists also have our effort is have the feature of giving that particular time to the other uh, nearby uh, relays also like um, you call you, you you may call it as a master clock in in building that so what do you need to do in that case if you have that feature what do you need to do you simply connect one antenna gps antenna to your rtu the rtu will connect or synchronize with the gps system global uh, gps satellite system directly without even taking from the, the clock signals from the scada and also generate this um, signals P on ppp or ntp signals to the nearby system suppose you want to use this particular rtu signals as a master clock and um, synchronize with the other system nearby like you want to synchronize the relays you want to synchronize your local any other uh, monitoring system you can use that particular uh, signals from the rtu clock and sync those things so that you don't require to purchase a, a rtu or a clock system gprs uh, gps clock system to synchronize these relays so many rtus have these features so when you are using this one you, you when you are purchasing this one you have to consider this is also a feature where you will be locally synchronize uh, or locally use this particular rtu as a uh, gps clock also and tele control tele meeting tele signal set a remote place. these all are the different features also there also rtu's main important thing is that when there is a signals like when you are using the rtu with the gprs like sim card based communication what happens sometimes signal strength is not uh, proper or signal is uh, weak those times what you what rtu should have it should whatever that particular time duration where your signal is not proper all these events or alarms which is been generated in that particular duration will be stored and whenever the signals resume it will send those data to the scada system so for that you may look into the memory of the particular internal memory of the rtu that is very important when you are purchasing or when you are concerned for the rtu so internal memory is very important so that it will it can able to store the events it can able to store the alarms and it will also um, um, uh, future reference suppose um, there is a one more system is that whenever you get the signal it will send it the, this particular stored data to the scada system also there is a small backup also it will make it like um, a seven days backup also it will some rtus will have it so that is again based on your um, uh, storage it will be the, the seven days or ten days or one month data will be also stored at the local level so, so it will be stored at the your scada system level also in local level also sometimes if you the local um, engineers want to see their um, old data they don't do they don't depend on the scada system where they want to see that they can directly come to the rtu and from rtu itself they can visualize the system they can compare the um, graphs and the other systems and automatic report generation also possible with, within the rtu system and real time and historical training also can be used within the rtu these are the extra features you may need because again it is depend on your requirement how you are defining your requirement how you are planning your uh, system again it is depending if you don't want to give any local uh, monitoring or you don't want to give any access to local engineers you may may not require these many internal systems but if you want to give it this uh, to the local um, or circle wise uh, engineers so these are the things very useful instead of their depending on the scada system and getting the data they can also look at um, their uh, own rtu installed at the substations and uh, see the data that is what uh, you need to look into that when you are um, uh, purchasing that you um, so far uh, no questions um, sanket uh, one question that does the rtu follow the latest protocol laid down by goi for communication yeah RTU normally these latest protocols are mainly when it comes to the substation automation or, or electrical system latest protocol is mainly on 61 fi0 protocol so uh, that is again for the uh, the substation communication purpose like from relay to RTU or relay to scada system within the scada local scada system you may you should go for the 61 fi0 protocol but when it comes to uh, RTU to the remote remotely you are sending to the um, scada system you may require 104 protocol 
that is IEC 608705-104 protocol is uh, been used. So these are the latest protocol as far as uh, government uh, of India concerned or as far as international standards. Government uh, of India is not having any protocol because we follow normally IEEE standards. Government of India is only laying down the, uh, the, uh, the what you need to say that the protocols, how you want to send it, those things like um, what you say that um, uh, security system only they are defining. They don't define that protocol systems because the protocol is the internationally standard protocols uh, they will be following. Only government of India is guiding for the uh, security, like web security or um, um, the other uh, communication securities. Those things also need to be uh, really look into that. When, when you're purchasing that, you, you have to see that uh, the, the security, cyber security system is already there or not. Like we, nowadays we are calling as a NERC, NERC compliance, N-E-R-C, N-E-R-C, NERC compliance. So this NERC, when, when the RTU is having NERC compliant, so it is automatically having all the um, cyber security issues being addressed in that particular RTU. So nobody will attack your system uh, without uh, uh, having the proper access. So that is what you need to do it uh, when you're uh, when you're uh, doing the when you're purchasing the RTU. So that is also a very important uh, point where you need to look into that security system of the RTU. Again, uh, this is what the features. So when it comes to RTO, like initially I, I was telling you that there are many terminologies we are using. Like one is somebody says RTO, somebody says gateways, somebody says FRTUs. But though the concept is same, even RTO have um, CPU, DA cards, DO cards, AI cards, AO cards, and FRTU also have D, uh, CPU, or uh, DA cards, DO cards, and A and AO. And even um, you say gateway. Gateway is little bit uh, different concept, but the terminology that the hardware, the everything is same. Like RQ can be uh, uh, used as a gateway. Even FRTU can be used as a gateway until unless they support certain protocols. So why we call gateway? Gateway is like if you have a substation automation system running in the within the substation and you want to send that particular data to the um, SCADA system. What do you need to do? You don't require to collect the data from each and every breaker and C CTPT because already the, the substation automation system is already collecting the data. So what do you need to do? In that case, you have to collect the data from the existing servers, the data which is available on the server. Uh, from that, you have to connect your RTU. RTU means here the gateway, you may say gateway. One gateway connected to their uh, existing uh, server and take the data on 61850 or 104 mode bus or any other um, uh, data uh, or protocol system. And those data is sending to uh, SCADA center on 104 protocol. So the data gateway is always, uh, in when you consider the gateway, gateway is having a lesser number of uh, DIDOs, but more number of uh, communication ports where it will take the data on uh, soft signal, it will send the data on soft signal. But when it comes to RTU, again, RTU also do that. If you have the more ports, RTU also do that, but DADO is not useful there. That's what people, some people say that RTU, some people say that gateway. So both are same. And uh, sir, question, we have one question here uh, uh, from Mr. Sandeep Alavan. Uh, Mr. He's Sandeep asking. is saying that, is it essential to use RTU? Can we not use relays or BC for protection and control, connect them directly on Ethernet up to the HMI system? Yeah, that's what I was telling you. Maybe you may missed uh, in my opening of uh, uh, this particular session. But I said, if you are constructing the new substation, then you go for the latest um, uh, relays on 61850 and BCU. Then all these are directly on the optical port. You can directly connect it to your HMI system. So that is what the different concept of RTU automation is not a, uh, not fall into that particular area. Where uh, what I was tell, telling you that 
if you are using a new new constructing the new substation you definitely go for the uh, vcus relays and um, automation system within the substation and then you may need one gateway which will be sending the data to the control uh, center but here the topic is automation using the rtu which is where uh, most of the discoms are not having like wherever there is a scarcity of the funds like you have already existing um, uh, substation is there where you have the very old relays where you have all the um, uh, breaker signals and uh, transformer signals all these are hardwirely connected to the your panel uh, this is like a, a control panel and relay panel separately you can see it na? so that type of systems what you need to do you want to make those things automated then you may require one RTU which will be collecting all the data uh, from the field system and that will be uh, sending in the soft signal to your uh, local monitor. And the same way it will send it to the SCADA system. So this particular RTU automation system is very economical. Like within 5 lakhs or 7 lakhs you may, uh, your, uh, your um, uh, substation, uh, the whole substation will be converted into the semi automated system where you can see all your primary equipments on single line diagram on your uh, desktop where you can see um, instead of writing uh, a logbook or instead of seeing um, meters and uh, entering all these uh, uh, things uh, day to day uh, time to time you can uh, generate all the reports all the events all the energy data within the uh, within the substation using this rq that's what uh, this topic was so, but when you are uh, constructing the new substation, definitely we will go for uh, latest BCUs and RTUs, uh, latest BCUs and relays. But this particular uh, solution is mainly the old relays, which will be uh, old substations, which will be converted into the uh, automation system without changing the existing uh, relays, existing uh, um, cablings. This will be helpful and very economical also. Uh, so, industry-wise applications, if you see that, uh, when it comes to a transmission, transmission where RTUs will be used as a gateway, substation RTU, SMS alert system, and protocol converters. These are the things we can use it as a RTU. So, RTU is having the capability of protocol converter or even the SMS alert system. So, most of the cases in transmission, we have installed uh, power grid where they want to make uh, their 220 kV and below substation normally a power grid having the 220 kV and above substations only. They want to make these 220 kV, all their 220 kV substations in sense, as a uh, unmanned substations. Where few of the uh, some power grid substations, they use uh, RTU, which will be connected to their existing uh, SCADA system. So whatever the, hap whatever the um, alarms or events come from the system, what it will do, it, this RTU will send a SMS to that particular concern uh, engineer. So he is sitting in the other substations, monitoring, locally monitoring or remotely monitoring this particular uh, substation, where he can get the SMS, like breaker is open on um, uh, the distance protection, or breaker is open on overcurrent or earth fault protection, so, some sort of information he will get as a prime, uh, preliminary. These all are the things, uh, few requirements are there, so we have installed that as a SMS alert system also. Um, even you can send up to 150 um, um, uh, mobiles based on the hierarchy. Suppose you want to, all small alarms will be only goes to the um, uh, AE level. And when it comes to a breaker tripping and other things, uh, it should be goes to the ADE or SC level. But you can make that hierarchy inside the RTU also. So that the major things happen, like uh, substation bus bar system is failed then maybe it goes to CE level and above director levels also. So those things only you can, um, the director will get it. So those things also, hierarchy system also, make it within the RTU for the SMS alert system. These things we have implemented in um, the PowerGrid uh, 400 KV system. When it comes to distribution, RTU will be used as a substation RTUs or a substation effort use, protocol converters and gateways, same. When it comes to generation, Again, automatic generator control, a, 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 AVR, AVMs, even the substation RTUs, EMS, like energy monitoring systems, protocol converters, and gateways. 
when it comes to the uh, process industry or industrial uh, sort of things these rtus will be used as a plc means plc also a was earlier plc is having uh, people are using the plc what is the difference between plc and rtu is plc having a standard set of program once you define the program in the plc all the data which is coming to plc and analyzing it and send it no it is a small box you can monitor you cannot monitor what is happening inside you cannot even monitor uh, you cannot change the uh, programs everything is standard it is a static box but when it comes to rtu it, it is again same like plc but having the more freedom of changing the um, uh, um, uh, settings locally within the rtu or remotely also or you can monitor what is happening inside the rtu all these things you can do it so plc is the old term nowadays people are uh, this particular rtu is replaced by plc plc means programming la programming logic uh, 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 controller program logic controller is the plc so in the process system you can use as a plc or even rtu as a steel plants ems sort of things and protocol converters you can use it uh when it comes to smart cities nowadays uh, we are using the smart cities or uh, smart uh, uh, systems where you can use the wet waste water management also or even you can use that pipeline uh, water system also this rtus can be used mm -hmm. and uh, gateway for the traffic signals tra traffic control signals even the even the um, uh, light uh, the um, street light signals also you can be used so rtu is not restricted to one particular uh, electrical system it can be used widely with the with the various uh, systems because anywhere you want to make it any automation you require some uh, field data that will be analyzed and put it on the program and then um, uh, use the commands that is what the normally any systems uh, normally use it so this rtu's work is same like collecting the data analyzing it and sending to uh, other system on the soft signals form or internal within the internal logic it will give the commands to the local uh, breakers or local water systems or local even uh, pressure systems also so using the rtu you have lot of uh, variety of applications can be used with the rtus so all these modern rtus have all the flexibilities so whatever you want to do it uh, in the with the uh, rtu you can use it uh, electrical system you can use it water system you can use it traffic system you can even use it uh, there is a one panama panama, panama canal over there where scada and rtu will be completely controlling uh, opening the bridge uh, when the big ship comes the, you know maybe you know the panama canal where there is a big bridge will be there and whenever the big ship ship comes it, the complete bridge is opens then once ship is passed then it will close for the normal traffic so complete automation is done with this um, rtu sense scada water based uh, scada system that is what uh, industry wise applications um question please name some models of data recorders or multifunction meters having the compliance to 6150 okay i'll 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 tell you and one more question from suraj more sir can you please elaborate more on bco i'll i'll explain you at the end of the uh, session okay and uh, again is it essential to use rt okay this is completed right okay so this is what the complete rt system uh, nowadays people are saying that like i was uh, earlier explaining that rt you have should have the uh, ldms system like local monitoring and controlling system or local data monitoring system where you you whatever the data which is coming from the field you can visualize at the rt level itself so that is what um, the ldms normally works in coming to the picture where if you if your rt is having the web web hmi or ldms you can directly connect with your system and you can see that uh, the complete your rtu system uh, uh, substation um, system at the your um, on your um, uh, laptop so normally in the web hmi or ldms you have these trendings graphics like single line diagram mft data events tags 
and system debugging system application or setting of the systems you want to change you want to change the baud rate all these things will be enabled from this ldms system so so this is also very important and with the very minimal prices you will get in this application within in built in the rtu so this is what you can see in the in the in the locally it is not on the scada it's inside the rtu where you can connect on your on your laptop you can see in the different like the your energy data how energy is over the period of in, within a, a day how this energy is been um, uh, ut utilizing or uh, last one week you want to monitor that the energy all these things will be available within this uh, rtu system like you can see the single line diagram also here you can see um, the comparison between the uh, today's volt uh, power and the yesterday's power uh, this comparison also you can see within the rtu so minimum basic whatever the local engineers required minimum basic uh, uh, data that will be available within the rtu where you can see the local single line diagram even see that the energy calculations energy trends like uh, everyday energy trend and um, breaker status breaker alarms and events everything can be seen at the local level so this is what uh, uh, ldms monitoring system is available so these are a very very small topic here because when it comes to a, a scada system and other topics which we are conducting from last one year every saturday so those are very big topics when it comes to auto automation system it is a very small topic where it is completely restricted to the rtu automation level so last time we have a scada system where i was taking at least one and a half hours time to uh, explain all the scada and what are the scada systems and how to see look at that scada system when you are purchasing and now what are the features you need to look into the scada system those things are very important that is been already discussed and um, i completely restricted with the rtu system even rtu also you, you can go into in depth by Uh, protocol so we will conduct scada on 19th of march again we are going to conduct on 19th of march yes okay okay so there is one more opportunity uh, of uh, understanding the scada system on 19th of march and next fifth we are conducting the pd measurement right partial discharge transformer right. partial partial discharge right. right okay so these all are the you don't miss it every time uh, our uh, from our um, uh, Uh, facebook and uh, twitter we are posting all these uh, seminars and webinars uh, information so uh, whenever you have this time or uh, are interested topic you can log in and you can uh, understand from our experts so okay when it comes to uh, rtu i wanted to even go into the depth of rtu of programming how to program the 61850 how to program the 104 protocol what are the addressings of this one what are the other things but it is very uh in depth uh, thing are very technical thing that's what i am not going into the in depth rtu inside what what we need to do well when we are configuring the breaker when we are configuring the 61850 when we are configuring the 104 protocol this is again in depth uh, thing which will be conducted um, uh, coming days for the very session but it won't be a, a webinar sort of things it should be a, a hands on uh, training sort of things will be there then only you will understand exactly how to configure the rtu how to configure the breaker the data and how to send those breaker data collected from the breaker and send it to the scada those things will be also um, can be understand it but overall if uh, this particular webinar is uh, mainly addressing the what is exactly the rtu rtu ka parts kya hai and when you are purchasing the rtu what are the features you need to look into the rtu and other uh, important features and protocols uh, you want to measure those rtus those things will be uh, i i covered it so this is what the rtu one and uh, then we have i just wanted to uh, share a uh, few of our executions where we have used our rtus with the different applications so these are the few major rtus or installations we have installed so many rtus so many substation automation system but these are the major where um, i put it these particular names where we have uh, supplied more than 50 rtus in the in the system that's what i put it those uh, uh, names only here like assam uh, discom control monitoring center we have um, supplied complete control and monitoring system scada and rtus we have supplied we have supplied mppgcl um, bansagar like madhya pradesh 
Suzlan monitoring system also we have supplied like all over world, all over India, wherever they have the windmills are all the windmills are connected with the, their substation 220 KV substations. Those data I am collecting the data and sending to the their um, centralized control center where it is situated in the Pune and call, they call normally the Suzlan monitoring center where we have supplied the SCADA and we have uh, supplied the RQs at the substation level and connected the data with the SCADA system. And we have uh, 400 KV Shikrapur and Aurangabad uh, we have supplied. And all these RT dash, what we are executing, like RT dash AP EPDCL, RT dash TS NPDCL, TS SPDCL, we have supplied uh, SCADA and as well as RTUs. Um, we have supplied KCB RT dash, RT dash Meghalaya also we have supplied. Even Gujarat, even Nepco, Bokoli, Kangdong, these all are the northeastern states. We have supplied um, um, more than 50 RTUs in the in uh, one project. Those all are things we have. I, I'll show one uh, one by one. Um, these all are some appreciations we got it from uh, various um, uh, utilities. Like RTUs are running from last two years, three years, four years. Those things. Uh, this is the one one uh, uh, MSCT cell we have supplied the RTUs. These are our case studies, like where we have supplied. Uh, we have supplied 400 kV system. Where these are our very old RTUs, and what happens? Um, uh, they 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 are using the existing um, automation system, having the ABB ABB relays, Alstom relays, even uh, Siemens relays, but they're. SCADA system is not working because because of very old system and not able to take the complete data. So what we did without changing any system, existing system, we replaced that SCADA and put it our uh, automation solutions without disturbing the physical uh, equipment. We only installed the software and started restarting a complete uh, 400 kV system with the automation system. That's what uh, we, we did it in MSATCN. 400 KV system. This is Nagpur, Aurangabad, and Parli, these three states. And this is Suzlan monitoring system where you can see that all the windmills, you can even see that visually also the windmills are rotating. If it is not rotating, means the windmill is stopped. So that visualization also you can see here. And all these windmills are connected to feeder, then transformer, then it goes to the control uh, monitoring system of the uh, Suzlan monitoring center. This is at Suzlan Center. This is 400 kV Jin substation where um, we have completely replaced the automation system, the local uh, automation substation automation system, and uh, installed our um, our uh, gateways. Installed here we are not uh, installed the RTUs. It was we installed the only gateways and uh, complete uh, replacement of our uh, SCADA system. So we, we have not uh, replaced any relays, existing relays, anything. Because all the relays we are, whatever the communicating on 61850, 103 protocol and other protocols, we take it as it is and connected with the um, uh, our SCADA system. And then we have installed one gateway where the, all this collected data or selected data will be sending into the um, uh, power grid control center or um, NM, uh, national uh, dispatch uh, National Load Dispatch Center also, they will be sending. Uh, then MSC DCL, we have given the IoT system sort of things like where here we have installed, this is the DISCOM, where we have installed a complete system of monitoring and control of um, a particular um, substation where I have installed the RTU or FRTU where I am collecting the data from the breaker, even I have collected the data from the transformer. Transformer also we are monitoring the transformer oil temperature, transformer winding temperature, transformer palm temperature, uh, transformer uh, um, um, uh, system, transformer complete uh, monitoring system also we are mo monitoring and all this data is connected to the RTU and RTU will be sending the data to the control center where we have installed our SCADA system. So this is again uh, based on the IoT because uh, here the MSAT cell don't want to keep all the big uh, servers in their head. So they said that okay, you make it as IoT, Internet of Things means um, cloud-based uh, system. So all uh, these collected data sending to the cloud, from there uh, MSAT cell is accessing the, um, their data. So that is what uh, we, are, um, we have installed there. 
So here we have installed even here transformer. Uh, um, uh, you can even change the transformer uh, things also from the remote. And this is what the Reliance uh, Energy in Bombay. They, they made it completely unmanned station. They want to make it un, a complete unmanned station where uh, we installed uh, level, their 11 kV substations. Where we have installed, you can see here, uh, the, you can see here, sorry. Here you can see, um, um, uh, the oil level temperature oil level sensor this is you can see here uh, this is um, uh, transformer oil transformer on the winding temperature uh, here you can see um, uh, fire fighters fire protection so fire fighting when transformer get uh, uh, catch fires uh, this particular nitrogen gas will release so we, we are monitoring this and we went from the control uh, center even the uh, fire smokers also here and uh, LD, DLMS um, energy system. And even the break, even somebody opens the door of the substation also, that particular door information also goes to the control center. So this is completely unmanned substation. So most of the relays in Bombay, relay substations are unmanned. No, there is nobody normally at the system. Everything is monitored from the control center. Even any anything happens in the substation will be controlled by their control center. And uh, and if and there is a crew will be there. They will monitor this. If any emergency there, they will intimate the crew. The crew will come and rectify the things. Otherwise, no no operator will sit here. No nothing will be in their um, substations. Everything is automated, uh, and uh, all the data is monitored from their uh, system. Even they have a logic. We have made a logic that if one particular feeder is carrying more. Um, uh, Amperes, so there is a theft uh, logical things like um, current thefting is happening in the Bombay, some in the slum area. So they want to monitor the theft system also. So we made uh, within the RT we made one logic where you can automatically recognize that there is a theft. There is a there is a hook is connected and the, the they are drawing the power without uh, metering. So that will be we made one program inside the RTU. So that whenever that particular program is executed, it will give the indication to control center where they can also understand, okay, this particular feeder with the RFS is um, having a hook issue. They immediately they will come to, they will inform to their crew, nearest crew, and they go there and they catch those uh, culprits. The, those sort of very good system they adapted in, in Bombay. So this, this, this is what we have done it in Bombay uh, for the Reliance system. These all are the, again. This is RMU, you can see here our RMU, and this is our RTU panel where everything is connected and this uh, this will be, uh, even you can see here smoke detector, if any smoke or motion detector, somebody comes in or out also they will understand. This is the smoke detector, this is the motion detector here. And this is the door, when, when door opens, limit switch will be just release and it will give the alarm to the uh, central system. This we have done it in the um, um, uh, uh, Reliance system. Now we done this uh, RTU systems executed in uh, uh, major um, discoms where we have installed the RTUs and we have installed the SCADA, um, uh, RT dash system that is uh, nothing but a SCADA system where you will get the SID SIFI values and the breaker status all these things will be the monitor for the SCADA system where you can see here the substation wise how we have connected uh, in the RT dash system. Here, the, the, these are all the RTUs, and this is uh, power ups like DCPS we have supplied to power up the uh, RTUs and the panels. You can see here, um, these are the um, MFTs. MFTs are MFMs where uh, the CTPT data will be connected to the RTU over the mode bus on RS485 and some of the few of the relays also connected directly in uh, some of the RTU systems we are directly taking the relays on 61850 and connected to the RTU. 
some some cases we are taking the mtr status like not relay from the master trip relay we are taking this uh, di signals but few cases we are taking the directly relays input like mode bus on mode bus r6 and f0 we are taking the data to the rtu um, uh, this is what the communication where we are putting the 101 104 oh, we are using the 104 here um, which will be normally we are putting one sim card inside the um, uh, nearest to the rtu we are using the modem and that modem will uh, send the this particular collected data to the control center this is what the substation end we have uh, done uh, this type of arrangement in the panel when it comes to um, control center this is normally a control center sort of things where we have, we are establish the mpls or vpn connectivity from there all this data from here all the uh, data will be connected uh, to the 104 protocol and send it to the single and uh, sldc at the control center this is at the control center uh, architecture and normally what we are doing here uh, under the rti dash uh, we are uh, um, monitoring more than 2000 uh, urban feeders overall all the rti dash projects uh, uh, to get put together we are monitoring energies we are monitoring the cb status relays controlling the cbs and a complete backup will be there at that and the transmission we are using the data transmission we are using the gprs connectivity with the mpls or vpn secured data network and uh, at rtu software and the scala center we are we are visualizing each and every substation with the single line diagram and events and alarms and that single line diagram also town wise you can see that circle wise and even substation wise even the feeder wise also so that much of um, micro level you can go and you can see the data you can also see the cid safe reports you can see the maximum minimum reports cb tripping reports and event alarms there are many reports are there so under this rtu uh, system we are um, uh, making or providing this these many features where you can um, completely have the picture of uh, cid safe picture of each and every circle each and every town town wise also <clears throat> these are the rtu uh, rtus which are installed in the rti dash under the rti dash system where is is a very small system very small rtu box where inside this this is the rtu you can see rtu and black one is the modem these all are the different uh, um, yeah this is rtu and uh, this is modem and th these all are uh, this is earthing system and all are connected to rtu and this is a dcps like uh, for the dc uh, pro providing the dc we are using the dcps here uh, this is when you see that uh, i just put it one tsp dcl uh, the um, how it looks rt dash system at the control center so i put it uh, ts uh, ts sp dcl rtu system where you can see that complete uh, their uh, complete tsp dcl uh, picture will be available you can click on any of this particular circular uh, town you will get it their data suppose if you put it on tsp tsp dcl all these days how many um, uh, substations are there how many are offline how many are online and circle wise how many breakers are closed how many opens how many errors all these things will be at the front page you will get it but when you go to the drill down you will get it even the circle wise data and even their alarms and other things there are many features available just i put it it for uh, understanding how it looks like rtus rt dash system these are all the things case use case where we are uh, already done uh, uh, the rtu installation and rtu automation systems um, with this i close uh, my presentation Uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, anything, I can now answer it now. Um, I'll take one by one the questions. Sorry, actually, this platform is only one-way platform. We use it for the webinar purpose. So uh, the the attendees who are attending this particular sessions cannot be directly speak to me. Instead, they can put the uh, questions on their chat box so that I, we can normally be addressed by going through each and every question. so i I'll, i'll take a few of the questions uh, sanket can you help me any any
where where this yeah, i think sir we we need to start it from the elaboration of bcu and there are four questions over all okay so bcu send the uh, bcu means bay control unit this is again uh, don't confuse with the rtus and bcs the functionality is same but bcu is having more power more logical uh, inputs inside the uh, the bcu where you can take collect the data from the select like rtu also you can collect the data from the breaker and uh, you can collect the data uh, the analog data from the mfts here bcu also you can collect the in data inputs uh, digital inputs from the breaker uh, isolator earth switch and um, energy data from the directly ctpt but here it is that key it is very limited to the protocols like in bcu you have only six, either 61850 protocol or or uh, some mode bus protocol not more than that and but visualization is more because bcu has the bigger screen where you can go inside the bcu and see all the um, um, uh, parameters all the um, uh, functions within the bcu but whereas rtu you cannot go into the big picture like rtu cannot have the uh, big screen it will be only limited uh, to uh, uh, functions and you if you want to see the uh, more uh, data you have to connect with your laptop so that is what uh, rtu have but bcu and rtu is uh, are more or less same only rtu have more uh, protocols in bcu only 61850 and mode bus is used and bcu is restricted to use only in the sub within the substation but rtu is having the more protocols like you can use 61850 you can use 101 protocol 103 protocol you can use dnp you can use mode bus so many other protocols also there so so um, uh, it is uh, the functionality is same but the application is only restricted to the substation is bcu even without with, with uh, using without using bcu you can replace the bcu with the rtu so that rtu also works same as bcu but nowadays what happens some of the bcs also having the protection functions like auto reclosing function is giving in the bcu even the the lbb local breaker backup like one breaker fails if, if there is a fault breaker is breaker breaker has to be open but due to the mechanical problem breaker is struck up then this uh, one lbb function will what it will do it will check that the breaker is not open then it will completely open the bus bar system so those things also available in the bcu so but rtu is not having that protection functions that's what few differences are not more than that but if you if you see that functionality wise both are same with more features in the in the rtu where you will have more protocols i think i i answer your um, question please name some models of data recorders for multi function meters having the compliance to 61850 see when it comes to a 61850 most of the cases what happens uh, most of the manufacturers give the um, uh, mft with the mode bus uh, system because mft with the mode bus is having very uh, the price wise also they, you will get the advantage it is within the 5000 6000 you will get that mfts but if you want to make it mf uh, meters or data recorders with the 6150 what happens the price normally increases ultimately what you will do all this mft will send the data to either rtu or bcu or other uh, end system so that's what most of the manufacturer don't uh, uh, entertain using the 61850 within the mfts but few manufacturers still manufacture like uh, i think you you have rishabh rishabh is having that 61850 within the uh, uh, meter or uh, many other uh, meters like uh, there are few meters uh, i'm not clear uh, really remember but rishabh is i think uh, having the 6150 apart from other manufacturer ae i don't think ae is having uh, i have to check it because i, I, I i'm not sure uh, maybe other manufacturers also there meko meko g and uh, so many other manufacturers also there like secure meter secure meter having i think uh, 6150 protocol so these all are the protocols but most of the cases what happens when it comes to a mft with 6150 it is not useful because again he has to send it to the the another 6150 device so 
and all the 6150 devices which are collecting the data is having a mode bus inbuilt by default it will comes with the mode bus so uh, price wise it is not economical to use the 6150 meters there are their own advantage i'm not uh, denying but if you see at the um, uh, commercial usage it it is not viable uh, using the 6150 meters another question is please elaborate more on wireless communication of rqs at its time synchronization feature does it require to maintain sim card normally uh, time synchronization will happens in two ways one is from the scada scada will give, give the uh, time uh, signals like ntp or pbs or ppm those uh, sort of pulses they will send it to rqs through the whatever communication mode you are using like rqs is there scada is there so somebody uses optical fiber between these two somebody use the um, plc plc communication somebody use uh, gprs communication like using the sim card so whatever the communication it, um, uh, it is they are using what they do this scada will send the signals to rqs rqs will um, get that uh, time signals and synchronize it with the signals this is one one of the one method where rq uh, scada will send the um, synchronize the all rqs whereas the second method is within the scada within the rq there is a there is a um, with, within this rq there are ports are available where you can directly connect um, the data uh, to the rq and rq will automatically sync it locally also so you need to have the uh, antenna that will be connected to the rq okay um uh, see and uh, what is uh, what else how many devices that one rq can handle again it depends how many rq how many devices means um again it depends on the rq capability see normally 256 dis maximum dis is used in the rq 256 dis and 256 dos and uh, as and eos is again um, depending on their uh, the processor capability if process is more powerful and capable to handle more data you can add uh, di dos and ai eo cards so and every manufacturer restrict like suppose if it is you are using a rq for the 400 kv substation maybe and the 400 kv there are around 10 to 20 feeders available so 10 10 to 20 feeders you may go for 256 dis are uh, not sufficient so you may go for another uh, did was but when it comes to a 220 kv and lesser you may require more than 256 uh, dis so again it is depending on the application so um, what you can use it and there is a feature is also there if you do if one rq you are using and you don't it is not sufficient for uh, did was already you have exhausted or used 256 maximum capability of uh, that particular rto dis then what do you need to do you have to add one more rq and interconnect between these two rqs so you will be getting 256 plus 256 so two processors 256 256 like that you can add keep on adding as many as it it can be possible that is what uh, you can um, uh, what's uh, sizing your rq also so please repeat the name of ic standard for rtu see the rtu have uh, ic 60870 file dash 101 104 these are the remote communication protocols within the substation there is a mode bus 6150 there is a old rtu a old protocol which is called ic 60870 file dash 103 protocol these are the different protocols normally Uh, we use it in uh, rq any other questions i think i i attended all the questions asked by the people so there is a what question last question from uh, mr alavat asking that rq antenna means it's a wireless communication for gps or it can have a wire communication with scada rq antenna means it is wireless no 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 it's it should be antenna should be connected with their, uh, their so it is completely a wire it's not wireless antenna should directly connected with the rq 
I, I show no, earlier my RTU video. There is a round sort of uh, connector is there. That is normally a DLC connector which will directly connect it uh, with the antenna, your RTU. Okay. Um, any I have any answered all the questions. Without the questions, okay. Uh, yeah, the okay. Uh, there is no doubts. I, I, I can also give my personal email ID or number. So at least, uh, if any doubts regarding this RTU or communication, you can ask me anytime or mail me anytime. Um, uh, Sankar, you can just post my uh, mail ID. Yes, sir. Or you can take the feedback and send it to mail ID afterwards. I have given your email ID and the link is already uh, for the feedback. The link is already in the chat box, in the top of the chat box, requesting you to fill the link. Okay. Do you have so, any uh, more questions? Once again, I am uh, I'm very thankful to all the attendees who are attending and taking their precious time out and uh, attending these particular sessions. And uh, we have next uh, webinar on PD, uh, partial discharge uh, measurement, and uh, another seminar, uh, another webinar on uh, fourth, that is IRM, like uh, earth resistance and uh, um, uh, leakage current IRMs. So this is PD measurements is on 5th March, and 4th March is on um, uh, earth resistivity and um, uh, other ERM and IRM uh, webinars so we have another couple of interesting uh, series of webinars every first and third saturday so, uh, you please follow our uh, whatsapp uh, or uh, not whatsapp so facebook and uh, social media pages. social media where uh, time to time we are updating all our um, uh, papers even the we are we are posting our papers also on the different topics new technologies on in the electrical system so you follow us so that you will get um, updated from that. Up to date, you will get it, our uh, webinars um, information. OK, any questions or we will close it? Uh, no, sir, I think we will close it. Uh, thank you very much for your. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for your participation. Thank you very much.